we finally got our eyes on the iPhone 15 lineup and I've put in my pre-order for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. That means I'll be upgrading from last year's iPhone 14 Pro and I want to run through my decision making, especially as to why I've gone for the Max model this time around. But I do want to lead with a quick caveat that I don't think this is a realistic or a desirable upgrade for most people. Unless you're trying to grow a tech-based YouTube channel like me where you actually use the phones on pretty much every video to produce most of the footage but i do want to highlight some of the main reasons that i think the iphone pro max is really exciting this time around and share my hopes for how some of the new software and hardware features can really push the phone forward this is the first time that i've actually gone for that larger phone model and with the 13 pro and the 14 pro one of the things that i really valued was the fact that it was quite a compact phone but still incredibly powerful but this time around apple have been able to reduce the bezel sizes and make it a little bit lighter thanks to that titanium alloy they're using and that means that I'm a little bit more open to experimenting with the larger model. This has also been the first year where I've been regularly traveling from Liverpool to London at least once a week. That obviously includes some pretty long train journeys where I use my iPhone quite a lot because I have a 16 inch work laptop to take with me. I don't always have space for my iPad or my own personal MacBook and so I've gotten into the habit of downloading YouTube videos onto my iPhone and just watching it throughout the train journey. That's that's great if you've got a power brick but sometimes I do end up getting into the office at about 9 30 and my phone is already on about 60% battery so one thing I'm really looking forward to with the Pro Max model is having a bigger screen to be able to enjoy that content a little bit better but also to preserve the battery much better and hopefully be able to make it through the day of what is quite intensive use. Of course though the real big upgrade this year for the 15 Pro Max is that it does get that 5x telephoto zoom lens and i will admit this is pretty sneaky from apple because every year they seem to find some way of leveling people up onto the next phone so for example last year the 14 pro and the 14 pro max had identical cameras and the fact that you have to go to the pro max plus version this time around to unlock a couple of extra camera features yeah, it does sting a little bit because it is an extra £200 here in the UK. Nonetheless, the camera on the iPhone is, as I say, really important for me because I use the iPhone so much for this YouTube channel. Basically, any of the non-static shots that I take on this channel come using my iPhone. And the fact that it can do up to... 4K at 60 frames per second means that I get incredibly high resolution slow-mo shots in my videos and I also find that I don't have to do as much color grading when I'm using iPhone footage compared to something like my Sony camera. The other more important thing though is that since becoming a dad 18 months ago, I just really value having the best possible camera on me at all times. Being able to pull out my phone and take really high quality photos and videos of my son is an absolute dream. And it's getting a lot more difficult now that he can actually run away from me so sometimes i do really wish that the iphone 14 pro could go further than that 3x zoom because i want to take photos of him while also letting him have the freedom to you know explore a park or a closed environment and i think the 5x zoom i'm interested to see whether it can get quite close enough to really capture his emotions and his expressions when he's exploring the world but hey, we're going to test it out and see for ourselves. The other brilliant thing is that with the 15 Pro models, you're now going to be able to take photos in just a standard format and then go and adjust it to a portrait mode afterwards. If you're switching between that standard camera mode and the portrait mode in an instant and not kind of losing that shot is actually pretty difficult. And I think that being able to do that in kind of post is gonna be just really cool. Now, if you wanna take all of that footage in the highest possible settings on your phone, it ends up leading to just massive file sizes. And so while you can airdrop things over to your computer, I find that you also have to kind of do it in chunks of about 10 videos at a time, especially if you've you know shot things that are over a couple of minutes. And so the USB-C is really gonna come into its own here too. Apple say it's gonna provide up to 20 times faster transfer speeds than the lightning cable and I think it's really going to encourage me to actually take much longer videos on my phone and one of the really cool things is that USB-C port is going to allow you to connect to a whole range of accessories and crucially you're going to be able to shoot video on your phone and offload it directly to an external SSD which means that you don't even have to faff around with transferring video files afterwards anyway and I also think it's going to make it a lot easier for me to back up photos and videos without relying on 
on iCloud because I'm always like just worried in the back of my head whatever happens if my iCloud account gets hacked or something happens to Apple servers and all my precious photos and videos and memories get deleted in one fell swoop or the fact that I can now just really easily connect to a SSD and just store the most important videos on there. I think that's actually going to be really cool. The other big change to the iPhone this year is that action button in place of the mute switch, which is going to allow you to map different commands to the side of your phone. For example, you could open up the camera app or go into a do not disturb mode. And I think I'm actually one of the only people who's going to miss the side switch, not because I ever actually go out of silent on my phone and I basically have all notifications off all the time anyway but I actually kind of use it as a bit of a fidget switch like I my hands always have to be doing something and I often just find myself playing with that button and feeling it vibrate in my pocket uh, just to kind of I don't know, get stress out or get anxiety out of my body. So I wonder what I'm gonna do now that I can't just play with that switch all the time. But one thing I am interested in is just seeing like, what can I actually do to program this switch to do something useful? In any case, I'm really excited to get my hands on the new phone. I have no idea when it's gonna arrive uh, because apparently there are gonna be some delays to the iPhone Pro Max. But when I do get that phone in my hands, you're gonna be the first to know. And I really can't wait to share the experience of getting to know this new phone with you. Do subscribe if you wanna be there for that. Otherwise, I've got tons of other videos you might like on the channel. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in a bit.